Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good day, good morning, good night, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Black Belt Academy of Surgical Skills. My name is David O'Regan. I'm a cardiac surgeon in Yorkshire in the United Kingdom and the director of the Faculty of Surgical Trainers for the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh and I'm a visiting professor at Imperial College London. Thank you very much indeed to the 3,034 followers and if you're joining this evening, thank you. If this is your first time, welcome and I hope that BBAS highlights and explains some principles of surgery to you. I'd be very grateful if you could share this and spread the word. One of my hobbies in martial arts is that of drawing the sword. And why I like drawing the parallels between martial arts and surgical training is described by the classic text of the Japanese Way of the Sword by Miyamoto Musashi. And this is from 1643 in his famed and undefeated samurai warrior. Martial arts are the warrior's way of life. I would say that surgery is the surgeon's way of life. First, let's illustrate the idea of a way of life. Buddhism is a way of helping people. Confucianism is a way of reforming culture. For the physician, healing is a way of life. Others pursue archery and various other arts and crafts and people practice the ways to which they are inclined, developing individual preferences. Very sage advice from 1643. But what I just did is draw a sword. And this is a brief text on the art of drawing the sword. And I've often reflected that when I started surgery in 1987, I was told, you know your anatomy, Therefore, here's a knife, there's a list, and proceed. The art was not described, and I've never heard anybody in my training describe how to use a knife. Bar one, Mr. Southwood in 1987 said, told me how to hold the knife, which I'll show in the moment, but wouldn't allow me to do an operation because I couldn't cut properly. So chapter one of Drawing the Sword, Ipon May May, is mind like water. A reflection on the water is a symbol of a clear, calm mind in harmony with its surroundings, the highest level of training in martial art. And before we actually draw the sword, let me put you in the right frame of mind. You must empty your mind of the day's thoughts. Close your eyes, think of something pleasant, something that has happened or that you wish should happen. Let your shoulders relax. It is most important to be relaxed before and during practice. Remember, if you throw a rock into a pond, it makes a splash for only a second. Then every drop of water returns to its previous stillness, as nothing had happened. This is most important. The art of drawing the sword is literally, now you see it, now you don't. And I drew the sword slowly because I'm in a confined space, but the experts can draw it within a heartbeat and a single breath. And the word, an adjective used to define Yaido is serenity and being at one. But like all martial arts, this comes with practice, and even at black belt standard, there's some basic things that you have to do, otherwise you fail the grade. So the first basic thing when using the knife in surgery is actually safety. Because the blade I'm using is a live blade, 
and is about, as you saw, over a metre long and it's razor sharp all the way down. The important thing about the blade is that the curve of the blade is what you use and when using the blade you're throwing it out like a fishing line and you're using the shape of the blade and the action to do the cutting. And that is much the same when using the scalpel and severing. So I'd like to take you over to the overhead cam as we get used to this fabulous new camera. Uh, bear with me one moment. And as you see, my new camera, thanks to Kevin at Wet Lab and Edwards Life Sciences, gives me this zoom capability. So the first thing is blade safety. And at every level in the Black Belt Academy, we ask that you understand and properly mount and dismount the blade. So I'll dismount it here, and you'll see that there's a bevel that is lined with the blade. I'm going to lift that off that bevel, take a grasp of the blade in a hemostat along its blunt edge and literally slide the blade off. You will note on the side of the scalpel blade there's a little groove there which a nail can run along and it's that groove in which the blade should sit. So to put it on, again pick it out of the packet on the blunt side with a good hemostat and a good grip. Slide it into the groove and pull it over the top. Note it's a one hand movement. It is a one hand movement and at all times the blade is pointing in to the table or an inanimate surface. Therefore there's no risk of it flying off or stabbing anybody or any patient. The next important thing is when passing the blade, it's best passed in the kidney dish and taken out of the kidney dish. That removes any chance of any injury. But if you to pass the blade, you pass the blade handle first and blade down towards the person such that if they take it out your hand, there's no chance of that sharp blade cutting your hand at all. The way you hold the scalpel is much like the way you hold a sword. And it's the grip that is the most important thing. And as in previous sessions, I've highlighted the importance of our grip, ensuring that the palps of the fingers are applied lightly to the instrument. You need to hold the knife like a knife and not a pen. That means that the blade is held in the palm of the hand. My thumb and my middle finger are maintaining the perpendicular and my index finger is extended down the blade for direction but also to give you an appreciation of the amount of force that is required. By holding it this way, you are feeling it with three of the fingers and directing it with the index finger. Now, the common blades that are used like this are the 22 blade, the 10 blade and the 11 blade. I'll come on the 15 blade and I'll come on to the 11 blade in the moment. But the important thing is, is the working angle of the blade is the belly there. So your blade should really be coming in at 45 degrees to the surface such that you're using the blade itself. 
And that applies to the 22 blade, the 10 blade, and the 15 blade. So you're using the belly and not the point. The point is very useful in the 11 blade. So to demonstrate some of this, I've got some pork belly here, and I'll first use the 11 blade. Now the 11 blade is used for incising, usually abscesses or drains. And the blade should not be just plunged into the skin. The blade needs to be insinuated and felt in the skin. So note the way I'm holding it. I'm holding it, again, thumb, middle finger, and index finger. My middle finger and thumb are stabilizing the blade, and my middle finger is extended down the shaft, and that is controlling the depth that I'm using. And certainly, when I'm opening the aorta for bypass, I'm holding the blade this way and insinuating the knife in, and I can take it out. Before you make any incision in a patient, any incision whatsoever, there are a lot of decisions, and we've discussed the decisions previously. Remember that unlike you think taking a needle through tissue, as we've done previously, once the knife goes through the skin, your action becomes irreversible. So you need to be certain what you're doing, why you're doing it, at the right time, and the right person, for the right reason. Two things that junior surgeons forget. One, your incisions, all named after famous surgeons, are named and placed according to bony landmarks. So in fact, people, it is very easy to think, oh, it's off to the left here, when it should be, for example, an appendix scission, and I know it changes with port incisions, but they're all related to bony landmarks. Make sure you know where those bony landmarks are. Secondly, is that with obesity, the skin and the subcuticular tissues will move side to side. So it means when you put the drape on from one side to another, the tissues will move as well, distorting the anatomy and the placement of the incision. So I'd recommend that you place the patient on the table correctly, check the side which you've previously marked, and pull the drapes down from the top. These are all deliberate things to ensure that your incision is perfect. Support the skin with your non-dominant hand, and apply the blade perpendicularly to the skin and draw it perpendicularly along support and deliberately supporting the skin in stages at each point. Now, the difficult thing is, is that, and why Mr. Southwood did not allow me to do a Ramsted procedure as an SHO, is because he wanted to know that my blade was 90 degrees all the way through. Because if we're not 90 degrees to the skin, what happens, and this is an incision through a sponge, and I've drawn a felt to pen at the edges, you end up with bacon slicing like that. And you can see when the edges come back together, how irregular it is, where if it's perfect there, you can hardly see the tissues underneath. My felt to pen ran over the top there and that was an irregular cut. So in one incision, perfect, not so good, and a little bacon slice, and that's what you can see there. The other important thing is, when you're doing a big incision, and remember that the drapes will often confuse you and not perfectly aligned, and many people consciously, or probably unconsciously, move parallel to the drapes. Again, your incision is offline. We're making a long incision, and in the Black Belt Academy, we teach five centimeter incisions, 10 centimeter incisions. But what happens with a 20 centimeter incision, like we do in cardiac surgery? 
perfectly down the middle. Problem is, is that people fail to abduct the arm and start twisting around at the hip as they continue the incision. And you end up, and I'm in Yorkshire in cricketing terms, a Yorker. And a perfect incision is one that is up and down. Now the other important thing about incisions is that you need to use the full length. And I worry about the current thinking, particularly with drain incisions as well, is that people look for the smallest incision. But the important thing is to remember that at either end of the incision, particularly during a long operation, at each end, particularly with a retractor or whether it is a port or laparoscopic surgery, whatever it is, at either end, there, 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 the prolonged stretching of the wound will end up with ischemia of the tissues there and a rotten, rotten cosmetic result. Now, the problem with mounting an 11 blade on a straight handle and trying to do a fusiform incision to remove a lesion, for example, there, from the skin, is that with a straight blade, you need to do a fusiform incision and people will tend to bake and slice again going round. So the alternative is to use a barren blade and here you can use the knife like a pen. And the barren blade enables you to maintain 90 degrees to the skin all the way round a fusiform incision. Now, the fusiform incision should be long enough such that the edges come together without any tension whatsoever. And I think of a lesion that I had removed on the back of my hand by a plastic surgeon who obviously thought they were doing me a favour by making a very small incision and then tried to bring the edges together. And in doing so, you can imagine putting interrupted sutures in something more akin to a circle than a fusiform shape. And the fusiform shape, you can see, will come together without tension, particularly if you pay attention to those Langland lines as we previously discussed. Remember, he was an anatomist who discovered all of this by taking an ice pick and making round holes in fresh cadavers and noting that the hole will either stay open or fall closed. So, what I would say is that wounds heal from side to side and not end to end. And it's at the ends that your incisions will actually show ischemia or poor respect of the tissues. The stab injury I made here for a drain and controlled. Again, quite often people make a small incision and the drain sits in there for three days post-operatively and effectively causes ischemia around the edges. What is worse is that people put a purse string around this and I've seen patients who have had beautiful stenotomies but the drain wounds, because they haven't been attended to correctly, end up looking like bullet holes at clinic post-operatively and look quite unseemly. Something more like out of a Hollywood movie. So the whole thing about the knife is to appreciate the feel. The feel of the blade. And the feel of the blade comes from holding it properly. And you need to understand yourself what sort of pressure do you require to go through tissues. Now I recall doing a coronary artery bypass graft and a gentleman who has hepatitis C 
positive, and the registrar was offered to take the red of artery, but decided to wear double gloves. Now, he didn't usually wear double gloves, but not because, and I understand why, he chose to wear double gloves, and in doing so, attenuated the feel of the blade. And you will know that your radial artery is literally just underneath the skin. So I asked him not to, but he insisted on wearing double gloves. I proceeded with the stenotomy, and then I heard a plaintive voice say, David, and I looked up, and his first incision had gone straight through the skin, into the radial artery, and lo and behold, we had hepatitis C blood splaying all over the theatre. I was not impressed. He lost the feel of the blade. So simple things you can do, and I'd like pictures of your practice sent to me, please, is feel the blade go through something like an orange skin and feel it all the way through. Can you cut through this orange skin round the full length such that when you pick it up and squeeze it, there's no juice coming out of it at all. Then you felt through the orange. Similarly, can you take a blade through a banana and feel, close your eyes as you do it, because you're doing it at home and your fingers are hopefully out of the way, close your eyes and literally feel the pressure of the blade underneath and see if you can feel the blade. Let us peel this back and there you go. Without much pressure, I'm already in to the banana. I wasn't at that end, but I am at this end. And I hope you can appreciate I felt it there and pressed it through the banana here. The lightness of touch that is required for things like ophthalmic surgery, hand surgery, neurosurgery, all needs to be cultivated with practice. I've previously demonstrated stitching skills using a poached egg. But let's see if I can stroke the blade over the surface and just make a delicate incision in the membrane itself without actually cutting the yolk. And there you go. I'm doing more damage trying to move the yolk off, but I hope you appreciate what I'm trying to do is demonstrate lightness of touch. So your feel of the blade is extremely important. And that only comes by attending to the detail and attending to the principles that I don't think are poorly taught in the art of drawing the sword, so to speak, in surgery. So let me take you back to overhead. I do love this camera and thank you Kevin. So I hope you understand why I believe that martial arts and the principles thereof are very applicable to surgery. What's interesting in Japan there's a long history of samurai in many surgical families. Indeed one of the common paediatric congenital operations was described by a Japanese man of samurai lineage and he did not attend international conferences because he stuck to Japanese traditions and only spoke Japanese. It was his Australian trainee that watched this operation and took it back to Australia and it's that Australian who is now named 
for the operation, but the samurai warrior, surgeon, was not. Perhaps foolhardy in his case by taking it to the extreme. I hope that this has made sense to you and I look forward to seeing you next week when we go further and discuss the art of dissection by now using the blade in a different way and introducing the scissors, the other cutting tool that we frequently use in surgery. Thank you very much indeed for supporting the Black Belt Academy of Surgical Skills. Please spread the word. I look forward to seeing your pictures of your practice and I hope you join me next week again at the same time. Be well and be safe. Thank you very much.